You know, all the people have the tendency to want to do some things. And you know, I've been guilty of it too. Mm -hmm. There were times in my life when I was young, when I get mad, you know, you just didn't want to have nothing to do with nothing. I just want to go <laughs> alone. You know, when you retreat into that cave, you say, I just need some me time there. <laughs> But you know, it took me a few years of getting old to realize that's the worst thing you can do. Because what that the devil have, he had fun with you. Because yeah. he, he ain't got nothing good at coming in your yeah. ears. Yeah. It's all nothing bad. Jeffrey. The devil just recycling the bad thoughts in your mind. So that's why you always want to stay in God's house, no matter yeah. how bad things get. Mm -hmm. Because you want that the Holy Spirit to be within you and to guide you. Man. I can remember once, you know, in the previous marriage when, you know, the, the person I was with, praise God, for everything that went wrong in the life, didn't want to go to church or nothing. Oh, and you know, that that creates an evil spirit within your household. Amen. And you can't be blessed when you got that kind of stuff Amen. going on in your house. Amen. You can't have folk man that God in your house expect to be blessed. God, the Holy Spirit don't dwell in one place. Amen. You know, that, that's just the way it is. That's correct. So we, we all want to stay connected to God. And then I really like uh, verse number four that we said, the righteous of the Lord, my people feel in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Mm -hmm. When he talked about Jesus when he came here, Jesus was flesh, but he was God. Right. He was able to walk in, walk in the Spirit through all he went through and never sinned. Only because he was God. We can't do it on our own. Amen. He's strong enough. I'm no, sorry. We He's much too weak, and God knows that. Man. That's why we have to pray for the Spirit to be with us, to God that we have the word to abide within us. God, we just cannot do it on our own. Amen. Amen. Brother Teacher. Yes, sir. Why we on that point? Can I say Come something? On. Come on. When we also were like like even folks folks table were saying, this we we we're speaking about the spirit. We look at, I look at the illustration like a report card. You take your tests and stuff in school, you got to pass. You take your tests and get your driver's license. You got to pass and never get your driver's license. All these different things we take a test. But here's the, right here, we got to study. We got to deposit something in the spirit. You know, we like, like the deacon just said, I, have, I stopped going to church. When I stopped going to church, everything was not right. I was doing some everything. But when you start getting back in God's word, and when you start reading, you make them a deposit of the word. You deposit positive things in your spirit mm -hmm. in order to do what God says to do. And you're trying to do what is right. All right, I'm going to stir it and get it right. This is the kind of mind. I think it goes this way. No. When I started reading God's word, I was hurt with some of the stuff I was doing. I have done it. I was so hurt. And guess what? When I hurt, now think about how God felt about it. Mm. I heard of God. Mm -hmm. I'm off track. I'm doing I'm doing everything I thought I was right. Mm -hmm. And this was this is our roadmap. We got to pick up this word. We got to come to Bible class. We got to make some time for the Lord. We make time for all this garbage out here in the streets. We make time to make some time for the Lord because we, if we don't deposit the right things in us, we could be off track forever. And, the, and then that's like, soon I see something like I like, I go run after it for a car. If it's a lady, all this kind of stuff because I don't have the spirit of Christ in me, I don't know how to respond to it when I get in the midst of it. Only thing I know they fall in and wallow with the, how they're supposed to do. People tell you, older people, and some people tell you, man, I wouldn't let that slide like that. I go handle business. Handle. Handle what kind of business? Folks still tell me that you need to handle your business. Handle. I said, look at him. You don't only have the spirit of Christ. And you can tell with the spirit of Christ when you first the verse of the word. Mm. I'm going to leave that there. Okay. Right there. Right Okay. And, and like I you were talking about during the break number four, you said, now who walk after? That's your lifestyle, the thing that you've done when you're walking after, you know, the flesh and whatnot. And people see your lifestyle. They, they see you after, you know, when you're walking. You're talking all the old, but your lifestyle is showing there you go. different. There you go. Different things. So when you're walking in the kind of mind thing, you know, that way you separate yourself from fellowship with God. Because mm -hmm. you ain't thinking God, you think it another way. Mm -hmm. You think it against God. Because the minister things, the way you process things, and the way that you want to do, when you follow God and different things, you know, you're going to have to go through some things, some stick you in here, it's going to be rough and whatnot. And, you know, and some of these words, verse 7, they reveal to us how human, how bad, you know, you're hopeless the flesh is. 
We were really bad off. You know, all of us really on death row. We Amen. looked at the I'm serious. Amen. If you look Amen. at it, we bad off as being human beings because, you know, not, we don't keep our word on nothing or none of that stuff. So we say we following God, but we don't keep our word on that. And he know these things. So we got to get out of these things. You put your mind on spiritual things, spiritual life. You get a spiritual mind that makes you crazy. You got a mindset that you want to follow somebody to a eternity. You know, and that's what we're going. Amen. You got to have that mindset that you got to have that faith. You know, you come out of front of that old flesh law and get, get into the faith law. You know, it's what like faith don't faith is what's going to get us there, people. And this is what our, our Paul is right and he's wrong. And he's got to keep the faith on whatever we're doing. Get back in and in, in in straight with God and get up from all that stuff y'all are doing and claim that you know God and you believe in God, but you want just the opposite of what God wants you to do. And, he, and you know, that's what he's doing. He's telling me, if you want peace in your life, you got to have some, some kind of connection with God. Yes, yeah. sir. I think it's extremely important. Two things happened when Christ died on the cross. One was he restored us to God. Mm -hmm. yeah, he made us right with God. So mm -hmm. God, we could petition God for guidance. You know, in the Old Testament, there had to be prophets. And, you know, they, they basically communicated with God. They would bring the word from God. Mm -hmm. But when Jesus died on the cross and that veil was torn in the temple, that basically opened the door for us to be able to petition God and mm -hmm. ask him to guide us mm -hmm. and, and to lead us and for him to direct our lives. Mm -hmm. And that was so important in addition to, you know, accepting Christ as, as our Savior and then having eternal life. But being able to petition God is such a great thing because he said he will guide you. Mm -hmm. He will lead you. Amen. He'll give you, you know, seek ye first and all these things will be added mm -hmm. unto you. That's what that is all about, mm -hmm. you know. So that's very important to be together too for the Christ. The story of God and that's the right to Amen. 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 Hey, can I add to that? We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll think right. Go to Revelation 3 and 25. 3 and 25. 3 and 25. Go ahead, bro. Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. 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 You know, when, when, you know, like I said, you know, like the deep was saying, and then when you die in Christ, you raise it back in Christ. You know, God gives us an invitation anyway. He's somehow an invitation to us. Whatever you've done in life, you know what I'm saying? He's always giving you a chance to get right. And the deep is going to tell you, uh, he's going he to let you know what the invitation is and different things. But it's up to us when we get this invitation. <coughs> you know, want God to, you know, uh, be amongst you in Christ and different things. So, you know, we just did what Paul, this is a good lesson I'm telling you, you got to, you got to read, you need to go back to chapter. I mean, all these chapters bring you up to this right here pretty much because of the thing that he went through. And he's talking about sin, the thing that sin will do, you know, and what not. And when Paul was telling you about these things, you know, when he introduced Jesus, now he didn't say he's coming to the light of sin and flesh, you know what I'm saying, he's coming to the light of human, but he's still fully God and what not. Do you have it? Read. Uh, Revelation 3 and 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Touch your mouth right there. Don't say nothing there. Did y'all hear that? Jesus Christ did it in the invitation and he's giving it up. Huh? Amen. Don't mean to be hard, though, but I just want to let it I want to let that pen break. Behold. That Behold. Sit down somewhere, be quiet, and listen. Amen. He's going to do some knocking, and then when he's not, he's just going to be supposed to respond. Come on. If any man hear my voice and open the door, mm -hmm. I will come in mm -hmm. to him okay. and will swap, sup, sup, sup with him, sup with him, mm -hmm. he with me. Okay. So now, in order for that to happen, you got to get out of that law of the flesh. Amen. So when Jesus Christ comes and knocks, he wants you to hear him. But he's not for all the time. We are like, you know, we play that game, ain't nobody at home. <laughs> Okay. Ain't nobody yeah, home. Yeah. Because we continue to do what we want to do. Mm -hmm. and, and, but now you, you got to remember we're dealing with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. So let's get our mindset on the spiritual things, you know what I'm saying? And then we can follow the ones that, you know, is spiritual. And that Jesus Christ himself. And that's what he ain't going to tell you. Get away from the sin. Mm -hmm. It ain't yours for you. Get Amen. away from that old nature because now you finish going to being a new man when you accept Jesus Christ. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? The different things. 
you got to be a genuine Christian. And then all the way, and all the way you can be a genuine Christian, you need to pray for the last God. I told them that they could then. You know what I'm saying? You got to be born again, man. You a, a different thing. And you truly Christian. You got to be born and forget about all that stuff. Let that guilt go. Whatever it is, throw it away. Stop bringing it up. Because, you know, if, if you follow Jesus Christ, then you feel much better. The devil will lost you. You're going to be buried down with that. And the word of God can't get it off. If you pay attention to it. Amen. And won't. He knocking. Knock it. To give to you. And it's up to us to accept it. Oh, what? He knock. Amen. Amen. Any other question or comment? If not, we're going to move right along. We're talking about, you know, guilt. That's alone, mm -hmm. uh, five and nineteen. Mm -hmm. Quench not the spirit. Okay. Do that. Don't do it. Don't do it because you know that's what God. You know, the spirit of God is what's gonna get you in and do you know fight against God. You know Amen. different thing being an enemy of God. You know and, and whatnot rebelling against God. You know the, the different thing. You know this what my, my, uh, Paul is telling us not to be done because any time you rebel against God, don't go against God's will. You know, it, you kind of like be a disrespectful and different thing. Being Amen. disobedient. Amen. Come on, brother. Amen. Amen. Is this Second Corinthians one and twenty-two? Uh, yes, sir. Who had also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts? Okay. Why you there? Hold on, one second. Go to five, five. And they just, you know, they just tell us, you know, uh, things about the Spirit and what. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you just ain't got I mean, book. Yes, sir. Uh huh. Now he that had wrought us for the same, for the self same thing is God, who also has given unto us the earnest of his people. Okay, then. Yeah, all this is coming from God. It was that he's right there when he left. When he went up, he's, he found us somebody to come back, a comfort. Mm -hmm. And he came back. Mm -hmm. So we got to let him wait. He's around, want to do what he want to do. But we got to line them in, and the only way we can get right is that's on the way out. On verse 10, it says now, but the, the spirit of life because of righteousness, Christ will be in you. If you don't have Christ in you, how you going to 
we in people with being righteous, man. You ain't got no righteousness. Because we were told last week that everybody falls short on their own. So if you ain't got Jesus Christ, you ain't got no connection to righteousness. Your righteousness don't work. Your righteousness is not doing the wrong. And you working, you know, for the devil in your own righteousness. We have to try to find out about the body for Jesus Christ, not for the devil. And those things. So we got to it's, it's important that we get a hold of the spirit of life thing and grab a hold to it because that's what Jesus Christ wants us to do. And, and what, that's what Paul is telling us. He brought them back then and also raised up. And he said, now, but if the spirit is in the race of Jesus Christ, the is the way of the guess what, people? If you follow Jesus Christ, the same thing will happen to you when that day comes. And it comes sooner or later. So when you ride and different things, if the spirit is in the way of you now, and you truly believe in Jesus Christ, guess what? You're going to be getting on that, uh, that cloud with him or whatever the case may be, uh, and follow that along. Eternal. Yes, sir. Will you repeat that statement one more time? I need to highlight that again. You fall short because of what? You fall short because of the thing that you do. I don't know. I mean, you know, you, you fall, fall short. short because of the thing that you do. Right. Not because of what Jesus Christ, you know, Jesus Christ is the one that gets you out of your fault. It's when you fall into those things, you turn over to him and start trying to dig it out on your own, you'll be better off. Once it happens. Watch this. People say, you know, we fall short anyway, mm -hmm. so I ain't gonna worry about it. You see how, see how I act and respond? Mm -hmm. Some people, because you said, because of your own, because I follow my own thoughts. Mm -hmm. When you don't pick up God's thoughts, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I definitely fall short. Yeah, Some people right. use it for a, a, a crutch or an excuse. You know, we fall short anyway, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh. They're doing they they're doing what they did. Cause you they done they 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 done with the body, they still in the flesh, you know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Amen. It is what it is. Amen. You know when a person talking like that and talking about their crib, they fall short, they make the excuse already. Amen. So when you see me, you gonna say nothing. Uh-huh. Or if you gonna see me, <laughs> you might have seen me before, but I just ducked you. The next time you gonna see me for real, you're gonna say, okay then, he ain't way, you know, he, but he let you know. I mean that is the way I look at it. Amen. Okay. So now you're going down in great protein. I said now you have to be led by the spirit. Amen. When you're led by the spirit, you got to, you got to get away, get away, grip some of that stuff. Amen. You become new. Amen. You got to. You, you ain't gonna keep playing with you bring them up in that you know half half hearted. Amen. You got to become new. I mean all this stuff becomes new if you're led by the spirit. Amen. If you ain't led by the spirit. Well, I got to go to first to run fifteen point two. Deep frame. <laughs> 15 and 22? Yes, sir. Up, keep you active. And you know, and, and when we make folks, you know, and all this stuff come upon by the choice at the you know, Adam and Ace, because of, you know, then they were the one that introduced sin into the world. And the result of it is physical death. And you, you know, a different thing. So, and, and, and the death of mankind. And believers are identified by a lifestyle. And dedication to faith. Our lifestyle has a lot to do with it. All were led by the Spirit and embraced the joy of living in a fruitful relationship with God. Expect that I experience the benefit of eternal life. That's what Father Jesus Christ means, eternal life. Amen. Father the Spirit, eternal life in heaven. Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians 15 and 22. For as in Adam all died, mm -hmm. even, every, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now you told me, sir. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and that's exactly what it means. That's exactly what he's talking about. Amen. You, you got to let the spirit lead you. And the spirit, I ain't never known the spirit to lead the person to doom. Amen. He might lead you to it, but it's not testing you and seeing how much you can take for that. He's not going to lead you into destruction. Amen. Only you. Only me. Going to do that. And blame it on somebody else. <laughs> and you can give it to somebody who can fix it right there. Gee. But, but Lee, can I just go back to the book? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
expect them to be, be good. You know, it, it's just that kind of thing. You know, like the old one, you always see it. You man, that they don't drive, they go, the devil don't want to drive. Amen. Amen. And, and Amen. That's, you know, it, it, the devil. You can't be mad because, you know, dropping your, your standard, you know, from God's word to something else. Amen. Like, basically, you slide <laughs> right on in to the devil's playground when you say that. And you ain't who you say you are. Amen. Amen. And it's going to get worse and worse. For real. I mean, we can make it, you know, whatever the case, how the saying going, but this real stuff when you're dealing with Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. So we need to keep it real. Keep the mindset on something that's good, you know, different things and whatnot. And, and, and all the time, I can tell you that it really is Jesus Christ. And, you know, just, so you got to let the Spirit, if you don't let the Spirit lead, you are, you are already stripped and told you which way you're going to go. You're not going to heaven. Amen. Stop playing, you know, that uh, I'll do it tomorrow or uh, next week. I just ain't got time right now because they, we don't know our time anyway. And the time that you don't have right now could be your time. That's what you're going to do when Jesus comes back. You're going to be standing in the street screaming and hollering. I know what you're going to do. Saying, I'm supposed to be over here. Yes, you do because you didn't do what you're supposed to do. The scripture told you. Amen. You ain't got caught up in the song. I thought any time you leave God and forget about God, your spirit is dead anyway. You ain't got God with you. So you can be all religious all you want to, but uh, you know, that's, that, that's part of the scripture. Follow Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. And also, Brother Teacher, this is, a, this is a good analysis of a person that coming out of the world, you can point out where you've been going wrong, this was a good track to get on. Good track to get on for the Lord. The distinction between the two. Know which way you're going. Where you were going, now you need to stop on that track. Leave that long. Get off that track and get on the right track. And this is what you must need to do. A lot of people go, I ain't never heard of what you never put no time in on trying to learn it. You don't know nothing. And you got some people like say that wallow in it, sit in it. Well, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> People gonna be people, but we're gonna have to do what people do when Amen. people are wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't care who we are. Amen. I don't care who the people are. Uh, when it comes to Jesus Christ, well, that's just me now. You know what I mean? You know, this whole letter is better. We got a choice between the flesh or the spirit. Amen. Which way you wanna go? That's all it is. The flesh or the spirit. You know what I mean? You know, we know that you know, the skin of the abundance of the devil is Jesus Christ, but we think the flesh is more abundant because we chase that bodily deed. You know, I got to have it. You know, back in the, you know, like I said, one before you got started, you know, the deep people so corrupt, you know, they had all these different type of prophecies in, in the temple. That's why I call it speaking to them. Mm-hmm. And the same thing that's going on right there in the temple, but it might be in your mind. Focus on Jesus Christ, get rid of it. Which way you want to go? With the flesh? The flesh is, the flesh is dead. Or with Jesus Christ? Someone you can have some peace, love, and everything is that you're looking for. Get out from around this kind of stuff we got going on. Yes, sir. I just hate for you to have to come away from nothing, but I have been well pointed out because I have told somebody this morning the whole world needs this one right here. So Showing them need this. Amen. And the whole world got in that too, but they don't want it. <laughs> That's bottom line. Hey, like, if you make me a choice, then hey, I go by the choice. You know? Choice me. If you're wrong, I tell you the wrong. And if you want to continue going on that road, hey, you go on by yourself. Hey, I'll be standing right here when you come back. I ain't going to tell you so, but I, I might tell you something. <laughs> Thank y'all. <laughs>
There's a struggle with every person. There's a war. Paul said that when he even desired, he wanted to do what was right. He said evil was right there. And, and it talks about the kernel mind. And, you know, the kernel mind, when we talk about the kernel mind, this includes obscene thoughts, lustful thoughts. But it also talks about lying tongues and jealousy, envy, strife, ungodly conversations, and even being hostile and built toward each other. When he talks about a kernel mind, every one of us struggle with that. No matter how long we've been saved, we still have struggles with thoughts. You know, even if you don't like them, you still struggle with thoughts. You want to do it right, but you're still struggling with thoughts. So now, in this yesterday, Paul gave us the solution. <coughs> and there's a solution. Meaning, you know, we got to ask. We know how to defeat this thing. And what Paul wants us to understand is, we don't do it through us. We can't do it. It has to be done through the Spirit of God that dwells in us. See, that's why we have to be, must be, born again. Amen. We must truly accept Christ so he can give us his Spirit. You remember he told the disciples, he said, go and wait until I send the comfort, which is the power. You, you remember before Peter got the power, Peter said he'll die for him. Mm -hmm. Jesus told us, no, hey, you're going to die me three times. Peter, no, 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 no. See, you know why Jesus knew that he wouldn't stand because he didn't have the power. Amen. And that's what Paul wants us to understand today, is that it's not through us, it's through the power that God has given us, which is his own spirit, God himself, to dwell inside of us. That gives us the same authority as Jesus being God, all fully flat, but fully God. We're fully flat, and he gave us God's spirit to dwell in us. Can y'all see this? Mm -hmm. So that's what strengthens us. So it's by the power, I mean, it's by the power of the spirit that we change the way that we live. Mm -hmm. It's not because I quit smoking, or I decided to quit doing this, or I decided to quit doing that. To be honest with you, smoking don't carry you baby. <laughs> it might get you away from here quicker. Amen. It's breaking the commandments of God. Now we, we're putting stuff in our temple we shouldn't be putting in there. I hate to tell y'all this, but we know it every day. You still going to the grocery store? <laughs> Amen. You putting stuff in. The doctors give us medication. He said, try it and we put it somewhere else. Oh, Jesus. So, so, so what I'm getting at, that's going to be so hard on them. Like, yeah, I ain't never smoke. Well, I ain't know what we're talking about putting stuff in our body. <laughs> so Paul is addressing a, a constant struggle with the sinful nature. And every one of us had that struggle. Deacon Delta gave us a head start on this lesson. Before it's sad. Men, mm -hmm. y'all should Amen. have a double dose of it. Amen. You see, we got to grow in the spirit. And we got to understand it's the power of the Holy Spirit that free us from sin. And brings life to our dead flesh because our flesh is dead. And it transforms us to be children of God. We can't be this by ourselves. It takes the Spirit of God to do it. We live in a society, in this world, we struggle against two laws. The law of sin and the law of God. <laughs> and there's a constant struggle every day, the law of sin versus the law of God. And they're, they're totally opposite. So, <coughs> We are like children who will always be learning, 
making mistakes, needing to adjust until God come and make us perfect. Amen. Let me say that again. Amen. We are children mm -hmm. and we are always learning. Mm -hmm. Did you get that part? Learning. Amen. We will always be making mistakes. And with our mistakes, we are steady making adjustments mm -hmm. until Jesus comes and perfect us. You know what the devil wants every one of us to believe? That when you sin, you might as well quit. Mm -hmm. Because you done messed up. Mm -hmm. Look what you done did to God, you might as well quit. The devil used tricks mm -hmm. to make us give up. Now, y'all need to get this. Jesus said, what can separate me from the love of God? He said, no house, no death, no principality, no power. Let, let me do it this way. No mistake. No mess ups. If you just come to me, I'm going to forgive you and I'm going to restore you. Because you're going to mess up. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to be tricked. You're going to fall from time to time. But that's why I'm here. To plead your case when you come to me and say, Lord, I've messed up. Now let me tell you something. What I'm telling you now, don't take this to use that Deacon Franklin said a few minutes ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll be out of fall shop, so I just gonna do what I want to. Right. This is what Paul struggled against with this Roman church. You see, the Roman church had said, well, you know what? If we are the greatest, <laughs> and Jesus did all this for us, we can live like we want them. Uh -huh. he, he, he made everything right for us. That's why Paul said, Shall we continue in sin that God's grace may abide? God forbid. No! Because we've been bought out of sin. But it takes the Spirit of God to help us to walk Amen. the way that God wants us to walk. And we put too much into what I'm doing instead of what God is doing with me. We put too much in it. I'm trying to do this instead of letting God do this with me. I can't do this myself. He said, imitate. Imitate. I believe it was verse 8, isn't it? Or verse 7. Now, verse 7. He said, it called, the carnal kind of mind is imitate against God. Do you know what imitate means? Imitate means hatred. 